How's it going? So good to see you again. Um, we are so excited. We are gonna start doing some science experiments to do at home. You don't need very many materials and they're gonna be super fun. And in these videos, we are going to have the star of the show and it's going to be called Science Time with Cowboy Science and his partner in crime, Cowboy Kings. Howdy y'all, I'm Cowboy Science and this is Ranch Hand Canes. Today, we're going to be doing some experiments. <laughs> Alright y'all, so we're ready for our experiment. Now the first thing we're going to have to do is learn how to perform an experiment. There's going to be four main parts to it. First part is asking a question. Asking about something that's going to happen. So I've got a question today based on our experiment. What happens to the height of snow after it melts? So we're going to be filling up a cup with snow and seeing what happens. Second, create a hop. Hit. Whoa, well, we got to a big word here. Hi. I can help you. Don't oh. worry. Alright kids, now remember, when we get somewhere that we don't know, one strategy we can do is break it into parts. So, the first part I see right here is, hmm, hi. High path. Oh, high path. Oh, I even see the word the. High path. The, the sis. Oh, all right. I'm going to try and put all the parts together now. High path. The sis. Hypothesis. What is that? Hypothesis. Thanks, Miss Clapp. So, a hypothesis is when you take an educated guess. So you think about what might happen and then you guess what will happen. So my hypothesis for this experiment is that I think snow height in my cup will stay the same after it melts. So this part's important for everybody to create their own hypothesis. In this experiment, do you think the snow height will be greater than, at the same, or less than? when it melts. Once we got our hypothesis set, we can move on to part three, which is where we perform the experiment. Collect the data. So to collect our data, we're going to fill a cup with snow. I got my cup right here, but we can use anything we find. It doesn't have to be clear. It could be a different shape, taller, smaller, it don't matter. Then I'm going to draw a height to measure the snow. So I'm going to see how much snow is in my cup. And three, I wait for the snow to melt. So we let it sit overnight. Finally, we're going to end our experiment by answering our question in part one. So I'm going to say, I found out that blah, blah, blah. So we're going to find something out and then we're going to report it. And that's the basics of our experiment. Here we are in our experiment. So there's four parts and we already got two of them done. We have asked a question, what happens to the height of snow after it melts? We have formed our hypothesis. I think personally that the snow height in my cup is going to stay the same after it melts. So here we are at part three, collect the data, fill a cup with snow. So we need to find some snow. Where are we going to get that? <laughs> Well, there's some snow right there, but I reckon it'll be a lot more of it outside. So let's head outside and we'll fill up our cups. Yeehaw, it sure is cold out here, but I got some snow and I got my cup. So I'm going to fill her on up. So a big part of collecting data is making observations. So I'm looking at where I'm getting my snow from, right on the porch. And then I'm also thinking about how I'm putting the snow in my glass. Am I packing it in? Am I setting it in? These are all things I can write down and think about later. Well, I got some snow, so let's head on in and write down what we found out. So here we are back inside, and we got our snow in our cup. 
I already wrote down a couple of observations. I got my snow from the deck and I packed it into my cup. So now we need to see how high the snow is in the cup so we can see if it changes or not. There's a couple of ways to do that. First, I could mark the level of the snow. So I'm going to draw a line at how high the snow is. We could also measure how high the snow is. I've got a ruler, but if you don't have a ruler at home, you could just use your fingers. So I'm going to count how many fingers high the snow is. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got seven fingers high. I'm going to write that down too. Now, all we got to do is wait and see what happens and then compare our findings. Wow! We waited overnight! And all the snow melted! So it's time to report our final observations. Shoo wee! It sure did melt a lot lower. My hypothesis was totally incorrect. And that's okay, that's why we performed the experiment. So let's go ahead and figure out how much water is in it. One, two. Looks like I only got two fingers. I'm going to draw my second line and I'll report my findings. Here we go. We had seven fingers before and we've got two fingers after. That's pretty low. So I reckon we can go ahead with our conclusion on part four and say what we found out. So my hypothesis was that I thought the snow height would stay the same. And the snow height went from seven fingers tall down to two fingers tall, which is much less than. So I found out that the height after is less than before. Well, isn't that great? And that wraps up our first experiment. We figured out what happened to the snow, but be sure to tune in for next time. Yeehaw, y'all!